Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Double murder in Park Lane. Two men were shot and killed in Park Lane, St. Andrew. The deceased have been identified as 40 year old Patrick Thompson and Yuan Green, who both lived in the community. The police report that the team was on patrol in the area when explosions were heard. A search was conducted and the men were discovered suffering from gunshot wounds. They were taken to hospital where they were pronounced dead. Investigations are ongoing. Manchester man killed after sharing Sunday dinner with his cousins. A Manchester family has been plunged into grief following Sunday's murder of 28-year-old Kimarley Bryan at Beverly District in the parish. Bryan had just shared his Sunday dinner with two of his relatives when a gunman shot him in the face. A report from the Police Constabulary Communications Unit said that about 7.25 p.m., Brian was at his sister's shop when a gunman entered, ordered an item, and exited. The police said shortly after, explosions were heard, and Brian was seen suffering from a gunshot wound. He was rushed to hospital where he was pronounced dead. A relative who asked not to be named felt strongly that Brian's killing was in relation to an argument at a party in the neighboring community of Evergreen. He did have an argument with a guy in Evergreen on Saturday night at a dance, the relative said. Brian was reported a performance stunt with his car when the man is said to have had threatened to kill him. Him, Brian, always a boss him look a freestyle upon the car, and while he was doing that, the people them dear like it, so them a boost him and I say it too short, so him do more, the relative said. The following day, Brian was enjoying his Sunday evening with his relatives when his killer posed as a customer and ordered a cigarette in the bar. Him de hear a DJ and a guan with him look a unique style. Him go St. Elizabeth and come back. Him ask for him dinner and sit down across the road pan a wall and a talk to him cousins, the relative said. Everybody they cross the road when this man pass and go in at the bar. Him order a cigarette, added the relative. The gunman reported the axe burn at his relatives where a party was being held. The relative said just as everyone answered the gunman question to say they were not aware of an event in the area, Brian was shot. Me swing him collapse upon him face, me run out there and grab him up and turn him over and a beer blood me see a come out and mouth on him nose, the relative said. Counsel for the Magali Division, Ron Kennedy, condemned the murder scene nowhere in Jamaica is safe anymore. Magali is a quiet area. What is happening now is not unique here. It is a national thing, he said. I don't think anywhere in Jamaica now we can say it is safe from criminal activities. It is a national cry and we need a unified approach to solve this crime problem because it really is getting out of control, he added. He mentioned statements made by two former ministers of national security in describing the country's crime situation. One minister did say divine intervention. One did say obia, but me think it's going to take a lot more of that plus more, stated Kennedy. Cops tackle truck stealing ring in St. Anne Trelawney. The police in Trelawney and St. Anne are grappling with a truck stealing ring in the two neighboring parishes since the start of the year. The robber's modus operandi is to pose as customers and try to haulage contractors operating small trucks to deliver construction material purchase at hardware stores, the police say. The haulage contractors are then told to deliver the material at pre arranged locations where two or three armed men are lying in wait and who then steal the vehicles. About 2 p.m. on Thursday, March 17, a 61-year-old Trelawney man was held up and robbed of his Isosa truck and other items by men in a section of the parish. Police report that the driver was hired by a man to deliver one yard of stone and 30 building blocks purchased at a popular hardware in Falmouth. After collecting the building material, he was accompanied by the man who had ordered the goods to a district outside the town center. Upon arrival at the location, the truck driver was pounced upon by two armed thugs. The driver was subsequently robbed of $10,000 in cash and his cell phone valued at $20,000. The man who had chartered the truck then reported they drove away the vehicle while his two accomplices held the truck driver at gunpoint for two hours before releasing him. All three hoodlums reported they wore black disposable mask covering their faces. The previous Thursday, a small truck operator, who was hired to transport 30 building blocks in the parish, was held up and robbed of his vehicle. Commander of the St. Anne Police Division Senior Superintendent, HSP Dwight Powell, 
told reporters that since the start of the year, the police have recorded five similar cases in the Garden Parish. Powell, who said that the cops are closing in on the operators of the truck stealing ring, also theorized that they are the same individuals operating across the two bordering parishes. We are following some strong leads and in small while, we will be able to crack it. We have not recovered any of the trucks as yet. We have the same issue and I believe it might be the same people, he stated. Hannah Moves motioned for Bob Marley to be named National Hero. Member of Parliament for St. Anne South East Lisa Hanna moved a motion in Parliament for Jamaica's regular icon, Robert Nesta Bob Marley, to be named a national hero. In moving the motion earlier yesterday afternoon in the House of Representatives, Hanna urged the Governor-General to take the necessary steps for the national honour of the Order of National Hero to be conferred on Marley. In her presentation, Hannah told her fellow parliamentarians that Marley had already received international acclaim and was seen by many persons worldwide as a global hero. She said many around the world have erected statues of his likeness to inspire their people. The opposition MP hailed Marley as a global icon of peace, freedom and love through his actions towards humanity and his summons of world leaders to focus on their policy decision to free people from racial oppression, poverty and war. She reasoned that Marley's messages have stirred movement for revolutionary social change, which have helped and continue to shape black consciousness and courage to fight against systems of injustice towards the marginalized and dispossessed in Jamaica and globally. In December 2021, opposition Senator Floyd Morris called for four of the Jamaican cultural sports icon to be declared national heroes and heroine in time for the country's 60th anniversary of independence on August 6, 2022. Maris moved a motion in the upper house for Marley, James Jimmy Cliff Chambers, Usain St. Leo Bowl, to be conferred the national heroes and Louis Miss Lou Bennett Coverley, a national heroine. He argued that the icons had represented Jamaica in a superb light across the world and continued to dominance of the country in reggae music, sports and culture since the island gained political independence in 1962. Last November, Barbados named Diamond singer Rihanna a national hero. The honor came as the Caribbean island split with the British monarchy and become a republic. Lawyers want law to protect against discrimination based on health. Attorney at law, Kedra Fuchs, who specializes in employment law, believes there is need to be changed to the legislation that gives protection to a worker against discrimination based on the health status at the workplace. In an interview with reporters, folks explain that in the National Charter of Fundamental Rights and Freedom, protected attributes do not include health status. This means, according to folks, the legislation does not protect a person from workplace discrimination if they, for example, are hypertensive, diabetic, or even overweight. There are no anti-discrimination legislation, and in the Charter of Rights, it doesn't protect you against discrimination based on your weight or other health issues. There are other attributes, but weight is not one of them, but it's not on a basis for termination. So, if you were to be terminated on the basis, then that wouldn't be unjustifiable dismissal, Oakes explained. She added, under the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, when it's list and attributes for instance, it says age, gender, and nationality. One of the attributes that is listed says health status, but our Charter of Fundamental Rights and Freedoms does not have that and that would help so many people. Now, if you had an attribute protected in the law called health status, then that will help. You don't have to go as far as to say fat because there are still people who would say they want protection too, so that is something we could advocate for. At the same time, folks explain that the only way an employer can exclude a person from employment because of a particular attribute is if it's not having the attribute is a genuine occupational requirement. For instance, an air hostess, the plane, with weight and all of that, how much cargo they're carrying, they might have weight requirements legitimately because the occupation requires that. If you own a store that sells male and female clothing, you wouldn't want a male to be dressing room attendant for the female's dressing room. So if you tell a male that they cannot get this job because you're a male and we really want a female, it would be discriminating but it has a lawful basis because being female is a genuine occupational requirement for the job 
Hawks explained. Hawks advised in the event that someone is experiencing discrimination at the workplace, he or she should employ a private attorney to write to the employer to advise them of their rights. The Minister of Labour only administers the labour laws, but the courses of law is not just the legislation, you have the common law, so if you want to enforce a common law right, you have to get a private attorney to take private action for you, suppose it is an attribute that is protected by the constitution, then you will take constitutional action, and then the remedies would make an order against the employees, folks stating, adding that the Industrial Dispute Tribunal is the only entity with authority to reinstate employment in the event of termination. Sectoral debate starts yesterday. Parliament resumed sitting yesterday afternoon with two heavyweights from either side of the House of Representatives. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett and Opposition Spokesman on Transport Mikhail Phillips opening the floor for the 2022-2023 sectoral debate. Bartlett has already predicted a robust debate which will focus on growth and economic recovery, a theme already set by Minister of Finance and the Public Service Dr. Nigel Clark in the recent annual budget debate. Beginning yesterday and over the next few weeks, cabinet ministers as well as opposition spokespersons will begin sharing with the country the details of portfolio contributions to the recovery as well as expose likely failures in the government's plan to enforce economic recovery by controlling debt and social spending. It is no surprise that Bartlett, who is also leader of the House of Representatives, will kick off this growth debate as his Minister of Tourism has stood out like a beacon of growth for the economy, which had been virtually locked down by the novel coronavirus pandemic over the past two years. During the Standing Finance Committee review of the estimates of expenditure in February, Bartlett had said that more than $500 million has been earmarked for the work on tourism-related projects across the island during the fiscal year. He also said that $225 million of the amount of programmed for the bridge development will funds also allocate to carry out work under the Enhancement Highway and Road Attractions projects. Opposition spokesman Phillips will also have his fair share of issues to raise, including bad roads and those affecting the country's public transportation system, especially the Jamaica Urban Transit Company, the government-owned bus company, and its failure to fulfill the need for proper transportation for both adults and children. Philip has insisted that the expenditure of $5.7 billion last year cannot be justified. There is something that is economically wrong with the operators here, Philip's declare, as he called on the Ministers of Finance and Transportation to take a detailed look into the operations of the bus company with a view to shedding light on why more were paid out for less service. The debate was scheduled to start at 2 p.m. at Garden House yesterday. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.